This short video demonstrates the new features in ITK Snap for semi-automatic segmentation of multimodality image sets. I'm going to segment tumor and edema in a brain tumor MRI dataset from the MICI 2012 segmentation challenge. The dataset consists of T1 weighted, T2 weighted, T1 contrast, and flare MRI scans. These scans have been co-registered and are all the same dimensions. This is a requirement for working with multimodality datasets in SNAP. I will begin by taking the T1 contrast enhanced image and dragging and dropping it onto the SNAP window. As you can see, the image has been loaded and we can see the axial, sagittal, and coronal views of the image in the ITK SNAP window. I will now take the T1 image and again drop it over the snap window. Now a new window comes up that asks what we want to do with this new image. In this case we want to load the image as an overlay. What this does is to place the T1 image side by side of the T1 contrast enhanced image in each of the slice views. We also have the option of overlaying the image on top of the other image. However, this is difficult to do when we have multiple image layers, more than two. So I'm going to use the tiling overlay that initially came up. I'm going to repeat the operation for the T2 image and the flare image. Now all four images have been loaded into ITK Snap and I can proceed with semi-automatic segmentation. To do so, I click the snake icon in the main toolbar. Once I click the snake icon, in each of the slice views I can see a red box that indicates the region of interest to which semi-automatic segmentation is going to be applied. For performance reasons and memory conservation, we want to select the region of interest the smallest possible that includes the structures of interest. We adjust the region of interest by dragging its corners in each of the slice views. In this case, I'm setting the region of interest to include the tumor and the edema. Once I'm satisfied with the region of interest, I'm going to click the Segment 3D button. After clicking this button, the snap window changes. First of all, each of the slice views is showing just the region of interest. Plus, there's some space that's been created for the new images that will be generated in the course of the automatic segmentation workflow. Secondly, on the right hand side, there is a new wizard panel that is going to guide us through the segmentation process. To make it easier to visualize the images, I'm going to zoom in on just the axial slice view, hiding the other slice views. Next, I'm going to click the Pre-Process button, which is going to bring up the clustering interface, which we will use to convert the four different image modalities into a single speed image. A speed image is an image that has positive values over the structure that we are wishing to segment and has negative values over all other voxels. Once I click Pre-Process, a new di dialog came up. It has thresholding and clustering tabs. In this case, we're interested in the clustering tab. Under clustering, we see inputs for the number of clusters, the number of samples, which we're not going to change, and underneath the table of clusters. There are some buttons, reinitialize, iterate, and iterate 10 times underneath the table, and a visualization of the current clusters underneath. First of all, we're going to set the number of clusters. In this problem, I'm going to set the number of clusters to six. This is because there is a tumor, edema, gray matter, white matter, cerebrospinal fluid, and the background in this image. And I believe six to be an appropriate number of clusters. Once I've set 
the number of clusters, I can see a speed image which corresponds to the first cluster. As I scroll through the image, I can see that this cluster roughly corresponds to the edema. Now this cluster has only been initialized. The expectation maximization method, which optimizes the clusters, has not been run yet. I can mark other clusters as foreground to see the corresponding speed images. So for example, cluster 3 on which I just clicked corresponds roughly to the tumor. Cluster 4 corresponds to the background. Let's say we're interested in segmenting the edema. I will go back to cluster 1, select it, and click the Iterate 10 button. After a couple seconds, the clusters have been modified, and I have a more realistic segmentation, pre-segmentation of the edema. So the speed image you see is bright white over the regions that roughly correspond to the edema and bright blue over the other regions. If I wasn't satisfied with this, I might reinitialize my clusters and try this again a few times. Keep in mind that the clustering segmentation mode in the ITK Snap 3.0 version is unsupervised. In other words, there's not much the user can do other than reinitialization to influence the modes of the clusters. You can manually enter in the mean intensity for each cluster, but there's no guarantee that the algorithm is going to preserve those means after iteration. If I'm satisfied with my clustering output, I'm going to click the OK button. And now I'm going to hit the Next button. Now I'm in step two of the automatic segmentation pipeline, initialization. This is where I'm going to initialize my active contour, or my snake, that is going to evolve to fill out the edema region. I'm going to place some initialization bubbles within the bright region. It's OK if the initialization bubbles overlap with the blue region. They will shrink during the active contour segmentation. Once I've placed my bubbles covering the edema regions, I'm going to hit the next button to proceed to step three, which is evolution. Now to visualize my evolution, I would like to see all three slice views again. So I'm going to restore my view to see all slice views. I'm going to zoom to fit in order to see the entire region of interest. Lastly, I would like to have a 3D visualization of the segmentation process. Under the 3D view, here in the bottom left corner, I'm going to click the little button with an arrow and click the Continuous Update checkbox. Once I click it, I can see my initialization seeds show up. Underneath the controls that Around the evolution, I'm going to set my step size to be 5. This will reduce the amount of time the SNAP spends visualizing the segmentation and allow the segmentation to proceed slightly more quickly. Finally, I'm going to hit the play button. Now I can see the seeds growing to fill up the edema region, both in the two-dimensional slice views and in the 3D window. Once I'm satisfied with the evolution process, I'm going to click the button again and click Finish to complete my segmentation. Now we can see that the segmentation has been taken to the main snap window and assigned the red label. So far, I haven't set up the labels for the segmentation problem, so I'm going to do that now. On the main toolbar, I can click on the Label button which allows me to select the foreground and background labels, which you can see have been initialized to just label one through label six, or I can go to the label editor window. In the label editor window, I can change the names and the colors of my labels. In this case, I'm going to set up labels for the edema and for the tumor.
I can also, within the same window, click the little F button to make the tumor my active foreground label. I will now repeat the automatic segmentation pipeline, this time for the tumor though. I don't need to change my region of interest. I will just click segment 3D. And once here, I will click the pre-process button. The clustering window comes up and the clusters that were used during the last time we entered this mode remain. So all I have to do is just select the right cluster, cluster number three, hit OK, and now proceed with the initialization ev evolution steps. I'm going to add a fairly large bubble in the center of the tumor, hit next, and watch it evolve. I have returned into my main ITK snap mode, and now I can see the tumor and the edema segmentation side by side. I can now save my segmentation as an image file. I'm saving it in a compressed nifty format. I can also save my workspace, which consists of the four images that I have loaded and the segmentation using the new Save Workspace menu option. Workspaces are saved with the ITK Snap extension. I can now quit ITK Snap and return to this workspace later. For example, if I want to perform some manual editing of the segmentation labels, or if I want to segment additional structures in this image. Thank you for watching this video and enjoy ITK Snap 3.0.